feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double XM. Power 21.org Radio. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry Wolf Live Worldwide. That's right, you tell him, little buddy. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to Late Night. Late Night with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide and the beautiful Kimmy Kim out of St. Louis. And Batman is here in Charm City. That's right, y'all. The beautiful weather. That's right. We don't have none of that heat wave stuff going on here yet. We're expecting to see it starting around Wednesday. That's right. Batman to get out there and cut the grass. That's right. Get it done now. That's right, y'all. It's going to be pretty rough, y'all. But hanging in, everybody. Winter is around the corner. That's right. That's right. We halfway through the calendar. That's right. It's July. We are in July, about to hit August. Isn't that something? Summer just fly by so fast. Man, it was a quick summer. So it's time to get your vacation, and if you can afford it, that's right, y'all. Go, go somewhere. You know, just get away. Go down to the harbor, lake, somewhere. Go camping. That's right. You can rent the equipment. All right, y'all. We got a great. Great, great guest. This, this lady been um, dealing with positive power for about maybe a year or two now. Sister, I think we met her before, around the pandemic when everybody was doing Zoom. So we had we had a chance to do a little television with her and everything. And she's uh, she's authored a, a book or two, and um, she's coaching and speaking and doing all the all the wonderful things to help inspire people and motivate. That's right. That's tough out there, y'all. We we getting bombarded with bad news on the daily. And if you if you got an iPhone or any type of app that's giving you news, <laughs> and you know there's no good news in the news, you're gonna you gonna get hit hard. So bad you don't even know who to vote for. And some people just not gonna vote for nobody. <laughs> That's how they roll. But and and then you take sides. You know how you take sides when the law is, you know, you, this guy did this, but the law had to do that. But then they did that, and it all turned out all wrong. Man, sometimes you're on the fence with it all. Man, I was watching this guy he got attacked by a police dog, and the trooper told him not to release the dog, and he still released the dog. Now he about to get paid now. He said, thank you for releasing that dog. I'm about to get paid, even though I was wrong. I should have stopped when y'all told me to pull over. But I was scared because it was too many of y'all. And I was unarmed. Man, you run when you arm and you run when you unarmed. What to do, y'all? What do you do? That's when you call on the Lord. Let's ask Kimmy Kim, what do you do? What do you do, Kimmy Kim? What's up, Kimmy Kim? How are you? What's going on in your world? I'm good. How about you? Batman is doing good. I'm I'm, I'm well rested. Uh, hung out with uh, the Bellows, the Smiths. I saw that. And Doctor V yeah. is a bishop. Mm. I've been I've been watching Doctor V's journey. I, I met I think I met uh, Doctor V about nine years ago. Her and her son Chuck. Yeah, what a what a beautiful. Mm. I couldn't tell who were the members of her church or who was just part of the you know the conference, but um, because everything was like a special invite, so it was kind of hard to tell. But for those that I think hung out with us in the, at the end of the you know taking pictures, I guess those were her like her go to uh, individuals in at the, uh, the Divine mm. Church of the Deliverance. How and was it? It was beautiful. It was you know how it is when you have reunions. Reunions are always wonderful, you know, because we didn't see the Bellows in a couple yeah. years, even though we you know we live like. Like an hour shot from them, and um, and I haven't seen the Smiths oh since maybe like seven, eight years. But we have been in contact. I, I do business with um with uh, Louise because she's a publisher, and and, and Linton uh, interviewed Skeet on his show, so we you know we had some connection. And plus, they always inbox me all the time too on, on uh, Messenger. So it's it's just like picking up the phone nowadays, right? <laughs> new era exactly our text scene <laughs> yeah, that's right new era new era and that's all i get out of kimmy kim is a text she won't call me kimmy kim will not call me. oh i'm coming back i'm coming back just uh once i get this girl swear away for two lane just i just want you to call me just, yeah i just want to give me a ring yeah. yeah just call me on the phone yeah i will i will yeah, yeah. shout out to uh, shout we out we've been two weeks so all i'm right. just trying to get everything square away yeah, for her i feel you 
Oh, that's right. She's going off to college. That's right. Where's she going? Right. That's what I'm saying. She's going to New Orleans. So I'm just trying to make oh, sure it's okay. where Oh, she's going to New Orleans. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah. 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 So you got some place to look forward to when you visit her for the holiday and all that good stuff. Cause she ain't coming home. Well, I've been in New Orleans. <laughs> nah, she ain't coming back. <laughs> she ain't coming back. Yeah, that's it for her. She, she just probably just scribbling her name on the wall. Um, uh, what's, it, what's your daughter's name again? Which one, what, which one is it that's going away? Um, Which daughter is going to college? Oh, Candace. Candace. She's going to just put on her wall, Candace was here. (laughs) This was going to be her bedroom wall. Yeah, Candace, (laughs) Candace, yep. Candace was here. On the 12th. Yeah, well, you know, I'm blessed. Uh, I I didn't think my baby girl was gonna come back, but uh, she said she had enough for uh, North Carolina, <laughs> so she came back. Oh, she she didn't like North Carolina. Said the weather is too crazy. You know, they too hot, man. You can't. You know, in Maryland, we used to that we can go outside and and, and farm and do gardening and, and won't have a heat stroke. <laughs> she said you, you got to have an umbrella when you go outside in that heat. She said it's crazy. Oh wow. Yeah. I believe it too, man. Cause we've been there in the spring and it was like, ew, you know. I spring, oh, wow. I, I spring weather is beautiful here in Maryland, it's, you know. We but go. I thought North Carolina had good weather. They they mm. don't really. No, nah, and their storms are like crazy, man. You think it's like a tornado coming, <laughs> tidal wave. In Raleigh, she's in Raleigh, right? No, they in Greensboro. Yeah, no color like ANT in Greensboro. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah Greensboro. But you know, the blessing is with the times we have been down there. It was early on, no, that's when she was in Virginia. We was always running into some storms when we were going to uh, Hampton. But since we've been traveling in North Carolina, I think one time Hampton, coming yeah. back, it was it was real bad that we couldn't see and we had to pull off the side of the road. But um, yeah, yeah, I can see Hampton. Hampton is no joke. They're right on the beach. So. Yeah, yeah, all that water, man. It's, it comes hard. Yeah, they I get a lot of flooding. Though. Yeah, because Hampton is kind of like on the island because there's only one way to get off the campus, and they do get a lot of flooding because they have issues with molding uh, on that campus. In the dorms? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they, they, so they're doing a lot of rebuilding, and, you know, there's a lot of new um, engineering uh, stuff they could do nowadays to, to remedy the problem, you know, waterproofing. This went to another level. Yep. But yeah, anyway. They do a lot of that in New Orleans. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's what I've been focusing on. We're almost there. So hopefully that will open more windows for me and you to chat up. Huh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Do a little traveling. So, uh, we're going to shout out to Dr. V. She is now a bishop, oh certified bishop. Man, she's, I told Dr. V, I said, you got to ride around with security now, Dr. V. You just can't be just rolling out the <laughs> house now. You got to have security, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, she funny. To me. They they had me laughing so hard. I thought I was at a, a comedy factory. There was some funny Christians there. You know, you know, people get the best jokes out of Christians anyway, because we just so certain. <laughs> about our God that uh in Jesus that you just it's just funny sometimes the way people are are with that you know so this this young lady I thought she told me she was going to sing because she writes her own music but she ended up telling jokes oh. for like uh I think it had been an hour yeah and she was just so funny oh wow yeah the oh, apostles wow. had beautiful personalities nobody was like a tight wad or you know bougie or whatever everybody was funny you know you could be your own self you know still be funny you know and serious when you need absolutely. to be absolutely but it was we had a really absolutely. really good time everybody could sing there I mean, it was funny because everybody got to speak to her they ended with a song so i was like i ain't going up there this time <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm gonna pass <laughs> on the mic this time but i don't think ronda bellows sang her and dr dr bellow bishop bellows they didn't sing but everybody else had a shoot dog on louise got up there and got on the organ and everything <laughs> Oh wow! I know, man. So you guys had a great time. Yeah, I thought Lint was gonna pull out his trumpet, but uh, he didn't have it with him. How is he doing too? I haven't talked to him in years. Yeah, he's doing very, real, real well. Yeah, he said he got his network. He, he, I think he did a little rebranding with the network and everything. But uh, you know, it's always something you got to tweak. So uh, he, you know, he's still enjoying himself, enjoying what he's doing. You know, all talk radio. Okay. Yeah, I think he went into all talk new music now. All talk radio. Yeah, and we started oh, wow. together. He didn't want to kind of convince me to go on the internet radio. We, we kind of was um, debugging this thing together. Matter of fact, um, yep, the origin. Yeah, because I met him 
through his wife who was publishing Dr. V's book at the time. And um, so we was doing some business with them, you know, with her, her clients. And then that's how I ended up meeting the Bellows at their church when um, when the Smiths came in town. To, to, uh, I forget what they were doing. They had something, I think they were about to sign a book deal or something like that with them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was, they, had, they had to wake up my car where I, I was trying to feel Yeah. Yeah. She looks so good, uh, Rhonda. Yeah. She got her hair updated yeah. and everything. Yeah, she let it grow out. So, you, did you see the pictures? You saw the pictures on her? I posted a few pictures. Yes. Well, you know, I, I, I you know, I had my hair is long too now since you introduced me to that product. I had, I had to put my hair in a bun. <laughs> I could let it wear down without a lot of control. Yeah, I had to, I got double. I got two two strand twists now. My wife made me. Oh wow! My wife made me get rid of the cornrows. <laughs> she didn't like the cornrows, so so anyway. You like the cornrows? Yeah, okay. man. I was feeling gangster, so you, man. Yeah, my niece. My niece got a salon around the corner, so I can just pop in anytime I want. And um, so um, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I like the way uh, Paula G been wearing her hair, and her 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 style is uh, Kyle. He used to have some really nice locks too. So I, they kind of convinced me to try. Are you going to do locks? Yeah, but I'm, I'm not going to do it permanent for right now. I'm just going to do the two strand twist for a while. Since since I got access to my you know my niece anytime, you know, I can let her take care. So I of thought me. once you lock it, you cannot lock it. Yeah, my 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 cousin took hers out. Yeah, you can, you can take it uh, take some time, but you can take. It. But I mean the two the two strand twist is how you start out. But once you go past like six weeks and and then whatever the next move is, that's pretty much you on your way. So I'm not going to do it right away, you know. I'm mm, gonna, yeah, I'm gonna just because okay. I like I like my I like my scalp really washed. <laughs> That's like a treat. <laughs> you can still wash it. Yeah, but I don't think they go down you know. real deep, wigging it all around like you know. Because my son has uh, locks. No, oh, Jordan. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They really long too down his shoulder. Yeah, he's been rocking them for since he's been in college. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, I okay. send you. I send you a picture. All right. Well, look. You ready? To, my time is up. You ready to talk to your guest? Because she's ready to talk to you. Yes. I am ready to talk to Miss Jasmine Tillman. Yeah, I like I always like that name, Jasmine. Jazz. Yeah, that's a pretty name. I remember I had a girlfriend named Jasmine too. Yeah, she, she dropped me I'm for she dropped me for a mailman. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Jasmine? Welcome to late night. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How you doing? Good, good, good. And look, we had to uh, kind of. We scheduled Jasmine because I think the heat must have t- took care of her part of town. Because I think when we talked to her Thursday, she didn't have no power in her community. So, you know, there's a lot been going oh, on wow. with, the, with, with the power grids because I guess because the heat index. So, Jasmine, where are you? You in, you in Illinois? No, I'm in Georgia. Oh, you're in Georgia. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Georgia. Yeah. But Georgia's known for heat. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it was actually the rain. And I'm like, oh, Lord. The rain took you out. Yeah, I seen them storms <laughs> in Georgia. I actually was, my wife and I actually oh, was in a pretty bad accident. Praise God, we didn't get hurt. I felt like an angel had grabbed hold of that car because I don't know how we survived getting hit by a semi. We got hit by a semi truck. Yeah, full speed. What area are you in? What area of, of Georgia? I'm in Atlanta. She's in Atlanta. Oh, hey. you're the A. I'm, I'm Dallas. Yeah. I used to live there. The ATL. Well, look, <laughs> well, look Jazz, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys talk, all right? So y'all go ahead and right, do y'all thing. You. All right. I'll be right back. Right. Thank you, boss man. Man, I'm jealous. You're in the ATL. How is it going on there? What's it the weather like great. now? Oh, Lord. So I'm from up north, and I couldn't wait to get away from the snow. Oh, uh, <laughs> But when I came down, I've been here for almost two years now. So it's going to be a year and a half in October. So um, when the last summer I was here, it was raining all summer. And then now, you know, summer here now, it's raining. I'm like, this ain't what it was all, you know. (laughs) But that's why I say it's bittersweet because I actually love it here. The opportunity, um, the different people, uh, the diversity. I should say, and everyone, you know, just kind of being themselves. So I really love it here. That's awesome. Where, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Toledo, Ohio. It's a small town oh, in Ohio. Oh, you're in the Midwest. Okay. Yeah, Midwest. yeah, yeah. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, so 
There is a little change there because you don't have to worry about the cold weather. You don't have to worry about, you know, the snow. Yeah. So you liking it so far? Yes, I actually love it. Um, it's more opportunity, I should say, out here versus me back in my hometown. It wasn't really um, when I first learned, like, what a life coach was <laughs> in my hometown. I um, I noticed that it wasn't it wasn't a lot of people that was studying what I was studying or wanted to do and be exactly what I wanted to be. So I, you know, I did a lot of researching and just really learning on my own, just in my room learning. And, you know, I made it here. I, I actually awesome. went to Kansas City. Yes, thank you. I actually went to Kansas City for a job opportunity. You know how God worked. It's time for me to go. And I never got on a plane or anything. And I got on that plane, um, never went to a different city by myself, state, I should say. And I took that job opportunity and it landed me here. So, Amen. Oh, Thank congratulations. Lord. That's God. Thank you. So before we yes. begin this wonderful fellowshipping time, can you tell the listener who is Jasmine? Yes, absolutely. Uh, first, I want to say I'm a child of God. Um, I am very, I'm a passionate woman who sees the light in just about anything and everyone, even if they don't see it in themselves. I'm also a three-time best-selling author, a ghostwriter, um, a personal development slash writing coach and a award nominee winner of the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Obama Gold Award. Yeah. Wow. Go <laughs> girl. You are a hard worker. What keeps you motivated? <laughs> oh, Lord, I want to say first, it, it's so crazy because it's not crazy, but it's so, it's so much of life because I went through a lot of phases, and I'm still going through different phases as I grow. And I want to say, just really, first it was my family keeping me motivated, and then it was me focusing on mm -hmm. the plans that God has for me specifically. So I can't like I can't destroy the um, the beautiful plans that He have laid out if I focus in on me first. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, see, I really believe that he gives everyone an assignment and you must fulfill them. And you ask him what that is and he will give it to you. That is so true. So with that being exactly. said, how are you doing as a life coach? What are some of the things that you find, like you things that you can't forget, like when you're coaching people? I want to say the... I, I like to speak on um, the traumas, like past traumas mm. that people face. So they have these traumas that they don't even know they have because they're reliving, like, you know, 85% of our thoughts are from our unconscious mind. So we already have programs and systems and everything that we work on um, and do every single day, a routine. So it's like, I don't, uh, it's the same thing. Like, I don't know, I have this trauma, oh, but I'm pushing everyone away. I don't know why, I'm just, okay, well, just forget it because I was living my whole life on survival mode, so I'm a lone wolf. I have a lone wolf mentality, so that's what I'm going to stick to. So it's just really focusing in on helping people uncover those traumas so they can work on this. Also, uh, change. At first, I was mm. I was looking to change and not knowing that it's messy. It's very messy and it's up and down. And it's very it's an it's an, an emotional um, it's an emotional roller coaster. Change is hard. It is no easy yes, path. It is. But yes, and I didn't know this at first until I actually went through it myself. And that goes into another thing. What well, last thing um, is knowing that um, everyone has handles things differently everyone has different ways that they handle their emotions and how they feel about things in, over in view and viewpoints just because it all starts from childhood so we see these things from childhood and this is how we grew but you grew this certain type of way so oh you're weird this other person thinks they're weird because they grew a different way but the other person may think you're weird so it's like i just like to really just have an open mind and really just try to teach people to have an open mind to the other person and try to understand them versus judging them or getting angry. Oh, wow. So I see what you're doing. You're trying to sit the puzzle so we all can win and accept yeah. each other's differences. That's amazing. 
I love that. Like, so how did you know this is what you wanted to do? Oh, Lord. Oh. <laughs> it was, I want to say, I went to, I was having, okay, so I'm going to get, so my hometown, I was going through, um, you know, very emotional um, difficulties with my family. And it was a point in time where I was house hopping for two years. So through this, I um, strolled across. It was it's such a movie scene, and I never told anyone before. But when I I went to, oh, wow. um, yeah, it was this. So my car, you know, I had an issue with my car, and I was at my. I had to end up. Uh, I was laying on my cousin's couch, so I went into the school. It was a, it was a business school, business management design school, um, Athens of Toledo, and I went into the office, and I'm like, I'm like. Can I sign up? Like, I don't know. I never knew what a life, I didn't know what life coach was. I didn't know business. I didn't know anything. And I went to there and I'm like, oh. I'm like, can I sign up? Um, Hello, may I sign up? Uh, I see that you teach business and management design. I want to, you know, come to court. They're like, oh, we're closed. We don't have any more um, classes open. We just shut the class up. And I'm like, oh, she like, you can do next semester. I'm like, oh, no, I need to do this semester. Like, you don't understand. So that was another four months. And I'm like, no, I need to do it now. Like, I don't have anywhere else to look or anything. So uh, my cousin works there. This is like a, this is my um, my father's sister's daughter. And we I'm not really that close. But she was like, oh, your last name is Tillman. I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, okay, well, um, <laughs> we can get you in. And I'm like, oh, what? Okay. Wait. She's like, yeah, you're going to be behind um two weeks, but... You can come. I said, oh, okay, yes, I'll be here. So it was just, I was walking. I was walking up the street to the the class, and um, when they let me in, and I was making sure I get there, like, no matter what, if I had to walk on feet or just do whatever I had to do to get to these classes. So when I once I was in there, I met a wonderful woman named uh, Linda Fairweather, and she introduced me to a wonderful woman named Jasmine Pope, and um, she introduced me to coaching and i'm like what is a life coach because i'm like i don't want to be a a, a therapist a psychiatrist i don't want to be a psychiatrist but i want to help people i want to help people so mm -hmm. she's like um okay we could be a life coach um and i'm like what is that so i looked it up and i got the definition and i studied and now i have three masters in it so it's like it was kind of fast paced but i just put the time in ask questions oh wow and you're very passionate about it and I see a book coming up. Uh, coming up. Are you writing a book? Or oh, have you began one? Are you in the process? I see it coming because <laughs> I'm sure you have so many different stories to tell, and that can help someone because you know you may have people who may not want to come see, but they would love to read, so they can you know still get help. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, woo, I have a few things coming, but I try. I'm like, let me calm down <laughs> because. <laughs> I was preparing on my, <laughs> I was preparing on it's my all good. Ohio. So it's like, thank you. Everything is done, but um, this book I have coming out right now, I don't want to disclose the name yet, but it is it is an awesome book. It's my first urban fiction novel. Um, that's all I can disclose right now, but um, it's gonna be coming soon. The cover reveal is gonna be coming soon. As soon as I work out a few kinks, to where I can bring it out. But yes, it is an urban fiction novel. Um, it's. It's gonna be exciting. Like it's it's about it's drama. It's um, it's just like a mixture of um. Uh, what what can I say? Proper like I want, I like to highlight proper etiquette because with the urban fiction you have you have it where you know they they speak in a different the different tongue like you know from the hood and stuff. So I have it to where I have proper etiquette and hood. Like it's just so it's gonna be mind blowing. Like this is one of the greatest books I ever read in my life. <laughs> Yes. That's awesome. Sorry. And so would that be available to the public very soon or yes, what's the time soon, frame? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to spend the next ninety days along with my enterprise. I'm um Where can they find it? it? Okay. Yes. We gotta Absolutely, yes. I'm almost done my website being revised, but on my social media, um they can find it right now until I get the the domain name for my website, uh, absolutely together. So my uh, Facebook is Jasmine Tell Me. This is where I do most of my networking and my work as well. So I'm excited. Awesome. I'm excited <laughs> for you. So 
know, when you're not coaching and writing and helping others, what are some of the hobbies that you enjoy doing? Oh, yes. So I'm working on that. <laughs> I do. You got to have your oh. me time. You know what? Yes, and that's what, oh, Lord. And that's what I'm working on, like, and I've been crumb like And you're, you're helping others about me time. You need your own me time. <laughs> you know, we're we're the worst when it comes to um, in the profession, and we don't really practice what we preach. Are you practicing what you're preaching? <laughs> oh my See, I'm on my way to practicing all. <laughs> okay. So, well, hey, you're honest. You're 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 being used up. Okay, I can I can take that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. I want to say at least one day I watch my uh, I watch TV, watch TV shows. So that's that's just about it. Watching TV. Other What's your favorite TV uh, show? Oh, I want to say I am into. Um, have you heard of Outer Banks on Netflix? I heard it's of. Like I've a never. Teen show. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like a team show. It's just like adventurous. I'm like, okay, I need some adventure, uh, more adventure in my life. Cause it's like. <laughs> I like I I work then I do more work when I get home and then when I wake up I do more work and probably I work in my sleep. Girl, just, uh, <laughs> I see. Are you an entrepreneur? Are you working both or how how does yes, this work? Both. Yes. I oh wow, go girl. Yes. Thank you. This huge jump, like I and I like to preach about um uh, uh how you know this. Um, what is it? This transition from another state, like by myself, and I'm 24, so I came down when I was 23. So okay, you're doing good. You stepping out on stage, and you know, get, have you met people? It's it's very easy to meet people. So yes, it, it, have you been I'm going to gonna... like social gathering and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I'm setting a goal to go to at least two a month. Um, just to get out there more because I've been having a little bit of social anxiety that I'm working through just because um, just because I had a few obstacles that I came through when I first got here of, you know, uh, people, I was too excited and I didn't know, excuse me, I didn't know um, that much about the state. So, you know, people take advantage of you in that way. So um, I've just been building myself back up for the past few months and really just, I'm ready to get out there and really just start pushing my brand. Yeah, so I'm excited. Oh, wow. And so what are some of your ideas that you do in the city to promote your um, life coach? Do you do like seminars? Do you um, sometimes oh, yeah. do things on Zoom? How do you get your business out? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I have a, um, none other than, well, besides my uh, TikTok, I've been, I'm trying to get more consistent on posting my um, promo videos on TikTok because I help women write. You know, Instagram is pretty good too. Have you, have you tried Instagram, to do it like yes. maybe in the morning, Instagram in the morning time? Yeah. I'm happy to, yeah, that's a great idea. I actually have to work my way up to Instagram. I have, um, I use Facebook mainly. I have a, a women's group, Infinite Queens Who okay. Write and Dream. I have a team. Yes, I just built a team as well. And um, where, uh, yes, we're going. Uh, they can find that on Facebook because it's exciting. I have the, about two thousand women. Every there. morning, so, how do you, how do you how do you guys every morning do you put on a uh, maybe like a thirty minutes or fifteen minutes um, prep or how does that work? Yes, so we have uh, a schedule. So Monday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday, excuse me, Monday through Sunday, there are activities that the women can join in and network and get to know each other. And every Saturday, we're going to start up going live every Saturday just to introduce ourselves and really network with the women and get their mindsets and really just vent to the other women, let them know that they're not alone, either in um, you know mental health and their writing. So I have a lot of things like the women that I have. They are they are amazing. So um, they came in. I let them. I let everyone be themselves, be themselves and open, and um, just really doing their own thing. So they just connect and network with the women each day, and you know, just let the women know that they are their words 
and their voices are heard and they are important. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. So coming from that's beautiful. So coming from Ohio, what was one of the things that you were you were like wow about about when you first um, you know came to Atlanta because there were so many wows when I moved there. What were some of your wild moments? <laughs> you said wild or wow? Wild moments, like wow! I didn't know people did this. I didn't think, know the people. Oh. Did. I know when I moved to Atlanta, it was a culture mm-hmm. shock. I'm like, really? <laughs> Look, I gotta first speak about that traffic, honey. I'll be going through it in that. Tra- <laughs> I'll be going through it in that traffic. I'll be like, oh lord, I just want to go home. Like I, I just can't. But it was a point where I got used to it. Um, it's a lot of people, but it's like I said, it's bittersweet because when I'm just driving, I have. I have most days when I'm just driving, when I'm not tired, I'm like, I love it. Like, I'm looking at, like, the big buildings downtown. It's the two big build, blue buildings. I don't know what they're called. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? Yeah, so the two big blue buildings sitting right Then I drive up, like, going home, and I just be like, oh, I love it. Like, the big city lights. Um, and a few other of my wild moments was the, I want to say, the, um, the people and mm-hmm. yeah, it's like you said, like the people in the adversity and, you know, everyone like the non-judgment or the non-judgment and people just being themselves and expressing themselves. I really love that as well. Um, there's a few networking events I went to and really connecting with people that are doing something in the industry and trying to make a difference and believe in and stand on whatever they have um, that they're trying to pursue it within their careers. I really love, like... I love it all. Like, those are huge, wild moments. Because in my hometown, I didn't really run into much. Like, um, if I was to, for example, if I were to uh, wear heels to a, a store or, like, dress up, I would just, I would be look like, where, where are you about to go? Why are you dressed up? <laughs> oh, like, wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I love it. Yes. Yeah. It's it's just something. It's just something in the air. It's like people. It's like the people, the vibe. It's just, and then you can live however you want. Whether you have mm-hmm. a family, you're single, mm-hmm. college student, entrepreneur. I mean, there's different type of lifestyles you can have there, and so that's what it brings. So much diversity. So that's what I like about it. So if you see like people who who are inspired to become a life coach, a life coach, what kind of um, advice or um, what kind of lessons would you give them or advise them on? Yes, yes. I would, the first thing I would say is to be very open and honest with yourself more than anything, because when mm-hmm. you deal with different kinds of types of people, you cannot hold your um, biased beliefs against them because they have different belief systems that they grew up grew up on. And you might think you know better, but you can learn from them and um, things that they went through. They can also teach you as well. That's another thing I want to get on. Be, being open-minded allows you to be taught because, like I said, there's no age limit, age bracket on success. Neither is there on learning from somebody. So... Whatever, whatever that you see that you can learn from that person, you can take that. And I like to, I like to mirror. Um, I've been learning lately that when I meet some people, that some of the, the characteristics that they have <laughs> that um, I also have, maybe I needed to see that within them. So mm, that's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. I can better myself because I've I've been getting that a lot, just really doing a lot of self reflection and shadow work because I have a I have a lot of things that I do all the time that my mind can also be on autopilot is what well, is on autopilot. So it's just like me slowing down and getting to know people exactly for who they are and accepting them for who they are versus trying to judge them for their beliefs. And, you know, it's just, it makes you, it, it frees you up because if you're upset yeah. or mad or confused that somebody could be who they are, you're going to be mad for the rest of your life. That's true. So, that is so true. 
You are a young woman on your way. You have a great head on your shoulder. You know what you want. You know how hard it is to find 22-year-olds like that? That Oh, now you're 23. But that's pretty good. That is amazing that you have. A div- so what do you see yourself in five years from now? Oh, in five years. Uh, I'm going to say... I want to say with a a huge building. Okay, uh, oh girl. Yes, yeah, so with all my services uh, provided, with the I want to say auditorium um, for speaking engagements, um, a session room for coaches, and um, what was it right? Oh yes. Yeah, the so speaking engagement. Yeah, speaking engagement room and the session room with coaches in it to really teach the youth that there's no limit to where they can go as long as they put the work in. Because if something comes easy, it's going to leave easy. Like whatever is hard, it's it's worth working for. Yes, it's worth yes. working for. Definitely. And I tell my girls, you appreciate it more when you work hard for it versus it given to you because you don't appreciate something that's given. So I tell my daughter who's about to go off to college, you're going to about to learn the real world. Congratulations. But, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we shelter you guys. So, um, she's been shelter in a way where you don't want them to see the bad side of the world, but, she got a little, you know, knowledge from the public education, education, but you grow up when you go to college. So, yep. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have to call my mom two times, just thank her, like, look, mommy, <laughs> I'm calling you mom. Thank you so much for <laughs> everything you did for me. Because this world absolutely it's it's cruel, it's no joke, yeah. but you know what that's good that you find yeah. out now, yeah, you're finding yeah. out now though instead of waiting to forty or yeah, fifty, yeah. yeah, so mm-hmm. you know what what's so you know how great God is as I was growing, I grew up extremely fast, so mm-hmm. I've been doing a lot of self reflecting on that because at first I was just upset, and I'm like why why did I always have to be the bigger person growing up? Because I went through a lot of obstacles very young and early, and I just thought it was just in my hometown. But when I came down here, I noticed that I learned that some people, like, are the same. People are going to be people. And it's like I learned early, and God gave me these these tools and steps on how to learn people. And people hear me talk, they're like, Wow, you're so intelligent. You're only 24. Yeah, I am. They just be so blown. They're like, I thought you was older. I get that more than I. I, I get that. I'm, yeah, you have an old spirit. Yes. You have an old spirit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And it's just like I'm like, oh my goodness, why did I have to go through all these things? But I'm now under. I completely understand, and I am very grateful. That's beautiful. And you know what? That gratefulness would take you so many places. Stay humble yes. hum- and in your humanity, um, body, mm-hmm. and continue on striving for greatness and helping those in need. You would be great. So, wow. What kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? Oh, yes. So, my first, it was my, um, my goal was to be like one of the, Number like one of the number one women in the world, inspirational women in the world. Um, but I just right now, like since I've been focusing on gratitude, I want to, mm-hmm. I want to just inspire others to simply be, you know, themselves. Like especially being themselves before the world told them who they were supposed to be. You know, just looking back on, like, what I like to teach, looking back on your childhood. Because when somebody be like, um, hey, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want to do. I'm like, what did you like to do when you was a child? You know, that really just, oh, you know, wow. then I ask certain questions that just builds up on that. And I actually helped a young guy, a young man, um, form his uh, business up on, start his real estate classes and doing, you know, things that um, he wanted to do because I broke down 
to like I helped him break down what he really loved and what he's passionate about. So I check in on him every now and then. This was just a guy I worked with. Um, There's a few guys I worked with. So I'm just I just want to leave my I just want to leave my spirit behind. You know, just really show everyone that you simply be and just love and be grateful, have gratitude. The world is the world is yours. Your world. Amen. Is yours. I love that. World. Thank you. And so, what is your favorite snack to eat? Oh, oh, stay with some cookies. <laughs> some chocolate chip. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing. Do, do you, hey, hey, do you have the milk in it? You put milk in it, or yeah. you just eat it by? Oh no, just the cookies and some cool um and some and a juice of uh, strawberry kiwi snapple. And my best friend, huh? my best friend last night. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, cookies and... Huh. You said chocolate chip cookies and some smoothie? No, in a sna- oh, no, I don't dump it in, but I just, I drink a Snapple with it, like strawberry kiwi Snapple. That's a lot of sugar. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Hey, everybody got some snacks, so it's all good. So, Look, I know I'm- you are, well, it beats... It beats um, drinking Red um, Bull, so you're fine. Yeah. Okay, yes. I, I'll be okay, I'll give you that. Like, <laughs> Man, that's a lot of cereal. I see why you so, you know, you, you you stay energetic because you got that yum, that yum bone inside of you. That's all good. It's all good. I like that. That is so different. <laughs> I just love talking to young people. You, I see that's the greatness in your way, and your your um, obstacles are really going to be the ones that um, you know cause you to talk about help people who experience the same. Um, you know, I was I call them distractions that you had, mm-hmm. and you you will become an expert, and that's amazing. You know, you're going to do great. I can see you traveling around the world. You know, helping people with um, what they lack because we need each other to, um, you know, edify one another. So this is awesome that you're so passionate about it because I could tell you could do this for free and still enjoy it. So you're in your passion. You're in your divine, um, you know, that task that God has given you. So with that being said, how does that feel in knowing that God has given you something to do? Oh, it gets me very um, emotional sometimes. Well, and I sit back most of the time because when I sit back and think about how, how, I want to say not, what is it, not knowledgeable, um, how um, smart. Wisdom? Yeah, how much wisdom, thank you, how much wisdom that I have at my age and, how how kind and pure my heart and my spirit is. I used to, well, back in the, I want to say, maybe I want to say a few, probably a few months ago, I found myself being upset because I'm like, yeah, last year, I found myself being upset when I got taken advantage of. And I'm like, I'm like, why am I, I'm too, I'm too nice. You know, but I learned to set more boundaries. Hey, hey, hey. I used to be in the same boat. Do you know how to say no? Oh. Do, do, you, do you know how to say no? <laughs> okay, well, once you learn that lesson, trust me, you got to get burned so many times. You don't know how to say no because I used to be really nice, but there are times it's okay to say no. You're not being me. Right. Well, you can't say yes to everybody. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm getting okay. there. Yes, I'm getting there without. Um, well, well, I want to, my mother, how, you know, the generational, you know, they bring down things from their generation. She would like, like kind of chop us down with their words for, like, since I can remember, but like, as I grew and st- started teaching my mother, she has changed and really grown a lot from her past traumas, but I chose to understand her and where she came from instead of being angry at her. So we're on a better path right now, but um, she would, you know, kind of chop us out and it'll have me so upset. And I'm like, 
you know, you don't have to do that to someone just to uh, tell them no or, you know, um, tell them, like, tell them how you feel. And that's where it got, like, that's where it got me at. I started to, I wanted to be nice about it until I'm like, oh, no, I'm setting boundaries now. <laughs> like, yeah, I had to set boundaries because I didn't want to allow my past trauma to allow people to run over me because they're not going to respect you anyway. If you're a doormat. So. That's so true. That is so true. But one thing I have learned in life, it will either hurt you or it cripple mm -hmm. you. But I see life, you know, because you're so sweet, God's going to protect you. So um, yeah. keep doing the good <laughs> work, but still learn to say no. And, and, and I understand it could be a generational because, you know, that's how we were raised. But um, unfortunately, we're in a different generation now. So a lot of people yeah. like to take, take, take and not give, give, oh, give back. Yeah. Ooh, and they, yeah. mm -hmm. and I do not, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm nice, but I ain't that nice, you know. <laughs> That's why I let people, <laughs> let people know, because I do not play. <laughs> when it comes to me, I do not play. Are you from Ohio? You better represent. you from the Midwest. Look, so, you know, you got to represent <laughs> us now. <laughs> I'm from the show me state. you from Toledo, Ohio. What's your, what's your slogan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even know, Lord. Wow, Lord. I'm going to get back to you with that. I'm looking at it. Okay. <laughs> with that being said, how can people reach out to you if they want you to come and bring a seminar or one on one coaching or they just want you to um, have a session with them? How can people reach out to you? Oh, yes, absolutely. You can reach out to me. On my social media, uh, Facebook, it is Jasmine Tellman, and that's Tellman with one L. Uh, my Instagram is Jasmine J R Tellman twenty three, and my TikTok is Jasmine Tellman one. Oh, and my LinkedIn is Tellman Jasmine, and that's with one L. I have to highlight that. <laughs> And also, make sure your LinkedIn is very good because you get a lot of leads from LinkedIn. Do some yes. um, videos yes. on LinkedIn, okay? Because um, it's a lot of professional people like jobs that may want your services for their HR yes. or maybe their department. You know, because sometimes they like to outsource things such as, such as that, you know, motivation and, you know, getting people back into, you know, their their level of, you know, competence, you know, maybe their skills are lacking due to issues at home. So they may, you know, hire you and you teach them, you know, things happen. So yeah. you have a lot of companies who, who who look for your services. So make sure you're, yeah, I'm sure you are though. You sound like you know what you're doing. <laughs> With that being said, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about your passion, what you're doing. And I, once again, I see nothing but greatness coming your way. And before we uh, bring Jerry back on, can you give a nugget to the young people? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, be yourself. Just be you before you allow anyone to come to you and tell you who you're supposed to be. Because what they're doing is putting their ne negative aspects and the way they perceive themselves and casting out their, you know, their spirits on you, but you have to know that you don't deserve that, and you have to stand your ground and represent for you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, sister. <laughs> Jerry, do you have anything to say? Now, we want you to pray us out before we leave, but Jerry, do you have any more questions from... Sister Tillman, she is amazing. She is yeah. amazing. JT. She is JT amazing. In the house. That's right. She, <laughs> she is amazing. We want to thank her for, uh, again, coming on Positive Power Late Night Radio and sharing her journey. And um, I just like the fact that, um, you know, she just stepped out on faith, man, and, you know, joined the other elites of the ATL and trying to make her way. Yeah, she's just 20, yeah. 23. I'm yeah, like. Young person. I was like, you got an old spirit. You don't, uh, wow. 
I mean, you look young, but your, you know, your voice and your conversation is very mature. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Normally, 22-year-olds talk about, I want to go travel. I, it's all about me, me, me. You're talking about <laughs> helping people. But that's that's that. where it starts. That's right. That's how you. People. That's how you get blessed when you help people. That's the purpose. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, everybody's going out their way. I just had um, my niece and her husband just moved out there. I, they they think they're in their thirties. Yeah, I think they're in their third young thirties. And um, my wife's best friend just moved out there, so I'm, I'm gonna be hanging out there with you, Miss Tillman. I, that man be there in October. Okay, yeah. That's right, October seventh. I think October seventh. If that's a Saturday, I will be there on Friday because we're supposed to be doing the taping at, on the Land Alive, and um, we'll be at the Black, the National Black Hall of Fame, Black Radio Hall of Fame induction. Awards would be on Saturday, and they're having a dinner. So anybody want to come out and hang out with me and Paula G? You know, shoot me and inbox me. That's where we be with oh, the right. with the other elites of Black Radio. That's right, Terrestrial Radio. That's right. They hanging, they hanging their plaques on it. Yeah, because you know, podcasting is moving, coming in strong, and it won't be long before most of your FM stations become Amber Alerts <laughs> along with AM. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, hit me up. Yeah, hit me up if you're interested in hanging out with us. That'll be Saturday, October. I think that's the seventh, if I'm not mistaken. October. All right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And it's a national because they got chapters. Yeah. Well, I guess they call them chapters or charters all over the country. So, the Atlanta nice. chapter is hosting this event. So that's gonna be good. Apologies, part of that. Yes. All right. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and that's something. That's something Miss Jasmine probably need to move into podcasting, man. You get, you gotta you gotta have a lot of arsenal when you're out here today because you want to reach people from all over the world. And when you, when you yes. somebody like you who have services and you know books, that's how you make your living in communication. Because podcasting is nothing but Amen. a form of marketing. That's all it really is. That's how I got into it, because when I started out, I was in publishing, and they were like, they needed help, because they was they sold their books to all their family and friends, and they wanted to reach other individuals, and the best way to do that is to come on, you know, come on different podcasts in, 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 in most of your major cities, and then you go out there and, and sell your books, all right? So he talked to me. Yeah, let's talk about that, because you do have that uh, charisma to do radio. Don't, don't, doesn't she... Uh, uh, Kimmy Kim, Dr. Kimmy, Dr. Robinson. Oh. Kimmy, you there? You, you kind of breaking. I'm going to have to put you on mute. <laughs> no, I said, yes, she is. She's a natural. Yes. Uh, I, I agree. I, mean, I tried. Yeah, also, I tried it. I just, I'm going to I'm gonna have to get some time. <laughs> in there. That's what we do late night. Everybody got you. Just got to sacrifice some sleep, <laughs> right, right, Kimmy. That's all. Just Amen. A little, just a little sacrifice for great. I'm telling you, it's really fun. It's really fun. It is. You can just is. do it once a week. Just do a once a week okay. show yeah, for thirty minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna consider it. I'm gonna yeah. highly consider it. And you meet so many people, pa- Kimmy. Man, you. T- I'm gonna tell you when I was out there in South Carolina with Dr. V, and then you know the Bellows were there, the Smiths, and then people yeah, come. A lot of people. Yeah, and then people was coming up to us because you know they listen to the show, and you know they follow Dr. Right. V's Bible study. It was a really great feeling. I told my wife, I said, "Yeah, I was a celebrity out there because she don't go to these events <laughs> with me because she don't want to be standing around watching me doing a thousand selfies. She just go to the room. <laughs> so that's why she don't travel because they always said, "Did your wife come?" I said, "You know she ain't come. She don't go to these things." <laughs> She did it once, and she said, never again, <laughs> never again, because she's going to treat me ordinarily when I come home. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, because you'd be like, Jerry, hey, Jerry, everybody pulling you from one yeah. angle to the next. Yeah, they're going to be hollering, hey, Batman, Jerry. Batman, and, you know. <laughs> she don't want to hear that. So anyway. But it's really fun. It is. It's definitely. You should try it. And then the war <laughs> shows, you know, because, um, like, we haven't really been playing around with the award shows, even though we got, I think, like 15 nominations this year. But I don't never go now because, you know, because the kids in college, and I'm, I'm on the road enough time just dealing with them. So I haven't really been traveling like that. But 
I can you send you that. You understand my issue now. Yeah. Okay, now. <laughs> well, yeah. I got two of them in school at the same time, so I know your issue. So anyway, so, Tillman, <laughs> Jasmine, you, if you decide that you want to come on the board whenever we get nominated, we send you. Because <laughs> all, all the war shows in Atlanta, <laughs> we, okay. let, we let you represent. Okay. That's right. And then the people say, oh, we know I you. I think you would do well. You should try it. Yeah, you would like it. I'm going to tell you what's funny. Gary is cool. I'm going to tell you what's funny. He's goofy, too. Look, Kimmy, we went to uh, our class reunion. And, of course, you know, this is one of them class reunions where it's like all the classes come out. I mean, from the beginning to, you know, 2020, class of 2024, class of 25. Even though they haven't graduated, those kids were there to uh, help cater and, you know, serve us, right? So, uh, of course... You know, you're sitting around, people going to be recognizing you, and they're going to, like, run it up to you, because I, you know, I use my radio now. I don't use the same name I use in high school. And so one of the guys was like, man, y'all, this is Batman, man. He was going crazy. And my son was sitting there. Both my sons were sitting there, right? And he looked at my son and said, yeah, and I know you too, man. Cause, you know, because he does our TV. He does our TV shows. He's a, a, a camera guy. But and he's in school for communications now. So he, he knew everybody. You know, because of that, this guy. So it was funny, you know, to to experience that. You know, and, and you know, we we friends with with Dr. Bobby Jones and and his uh, music director, Mr. Everett Drake, and some of these people who are part of the Grammys, Academy, the Stellar Awards, all these big promoters. You get a chance to meet all these people because they know who you are. Because you, you if you hit, decide to do guests. You have a chance to have their, their clients on your show. They, they really appreciate that. And they invite you to showcases so you can listen to music, be part of listening parties, man. All that, all that comes with this. People don't realize how big podcasting has come. It's, it's, yeah. Tell them, right, Kimmy? Because Kimmy used to do AM radio. Remember, Kimmy? Yes, I did. And it was a waste of money. <laughs> yep. The good old yeah, cause I And I just did it, too. Matter of fact, I just came out of AM radio. During the um, pandemic, when the pandemic came, the, the, the radio station was actually stationed in a high school. Uh, this guy had invested, like, all his money into it, and you know, so the kids can have, like, real hands-on experience. And it was open to the community because it was public radio. And I had a, um, a, one of my podcasters had a show, and we would go there and, you know, do promotions and stuff like that in the studio. Plus, my brother was on the show also. It was a jazz program. And... Um, of course, the locals get to know who you are because it only went out like seventy five miles. The signal, <laughs> right, right, Kimmy. As far as it go, occasionally it will. The signal would leak from Delaware to D.C. and Virginia. You know, good wind. <laughs> People can listen to it, but uh, internet radio is the thing, man. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. All right. So who gonna press up? Too, who gonna- you can do it anywhere. That's right. You can do it anywhere. Anywhere. You don't have to be at a computer. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, who who's praying us out? Kimmy Kim, is you praying us out? Doctor Doctor Robinson. Tim and, Sister Tim is doing that. Yeah, we always do the guests. Are you gonna put it on her? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Okay. Look, I, I love her. She's young. she got an old spirit, and uh, then she's young. So. All right, well, Jazz. Yeah. Just remember, I didn't do that. I only make I only make the uh, the uh, parishioners, uh, the past the clergyman pray because <laughs> that's their job. <laughs> oh, excuse me, it's gonna be short. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be short. Go oh, ahead, oh, do, do the best fine. you can. Yeah, do the best you can. She'll okay. be fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Um. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lord for everything that you have blessed us with tonight. Um, thank you for connecting me with um, these two amazing um, individuals who have allowed me to share my voice on the platform and reach many people who can take from and learn from my spirit and um, learn from your word, Lord, because you put the spirit inside of me and allow me to share it with the rest of the world or thank you for everything that you have blessed us with in jesus name i pray amen <laughs> amen <laughs> hallelujah the highest amen. praise I'm sorry, I'm simple to pray to myself. simple and to the point that was perfect that's right pray okay, that's right <laughs> international prayer that was an international <laughs> prayer she just made kimmy kim exactly dr robbins very good jasmine <laughs> i like how y'all Okay, I like how I'll move it over. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
That was beautiful. That's I'm right. serious, my sister. You did great. I like it because some people keep us on here for almost 20 minutes. <laughs> we got to go. It's 11, <laughs> it's 11 o'clock. People are going to be calling your phone, too. <laughs> yeah, it's 11 o'clock. It's time to go. That's right. But don't forget, y'all, y'all can join us every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time to listen to Dr. V, now Bishop Virginia Singleton Bible Study. That's right. And she she brings it hard, too. She smack you on your, on your hand if you messing up. That's right. So come check us out, y'all. A lot of us do need some corrections. We just been out there just wavering out there and sin. So uh, come on out and join us at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll check out her channel. So you can Google Dr. V or Jerry Woods Live and you'll, you'll find all our podcasts on Spotify, Our Heart, and Google and Apple. Okay. All right. That's all I got, Kimmy Kim. Any final words, Kimmy Kim? What? I just want to say that be your best and always put God first and nothing can stop you. I just, I was blessed by a young person. She, she's yeah. amazing. Right. So I pray that whoever she does will prosper. That's right, wherever she touch. I just right. want to thank you, Batman, for this opportunity. I love, I love my money. Money nights is amazing. Amen. <laughs> and Jazz, man, you have any final words for the people? Any encouraging yes. words? <laughs> well, just, keep, just keep your head up. Keep your head high. Through the obstacles and struggles that come your way because they are lessons to build you for the positive and great future that the Lord has stored in, in store for you. Amen. Stay encouraged, everybody. Amen. All right. Take care, everybody. And thanks for joining us on Late Night with Jervis Live and Kimmy Kim. Join us Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Kelly Holland and Jerry Woods Live Worldwide. You are listening to Jerry Woods Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power. A double X. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walsh Live, Worldwide.